Right, so like I said, I'll tell you the story. I could have went on a big podcast with this, but I thought I'll put up my own YouTube channel. Why not? Right, so this is just the beginning. I'll start from the beginning. Then we'll get to the world exclusive after part one. So I met my partner. We lived on the same road, but she, like, literally 100, 200 yards away, but we never ever knew each other or met each other. But I knocked about with, with my partner's cousin at the time. We're in fourth year school. And he said to me, do you fancy coming down uh, for, for a drink? Like, as kids, as you do down the park. I said, yeah, so I'll come down tonight. So I goes down and I meet my partner, Gemma. We were, we were 14 and a half at the time. We ended up, like, getting talking. We ended up seeing each other. So... Like, we were proper loved up at the time. So we went and met, like, my parents and their parents and stuff, like, as you do. And then I... About six months later, she fell pregnant. So she was, like, no, about a year later. So she was 15 and a half, and I was 15 and a half. We're both in school still when she fell pregnant. So both just two scared young kids. So we didn't dare tell anybody about my partner being pregnant. So she said to me, what can we do? I said, well, I don't know. Just, I'm just going to have to keep it hid. So anyways, we decided not to tell anybody, but, and her bump was getting bigger and bigger. She was still at school. But as soon as I found she was pregnant, I left school. I said to my dad, I said, look, I said, I want to go to work. So I was, going, I was working at, like so at 15, 14, 15, so I was left, I wasn't even left school, I, I didn't even, I, I figured I'd about four days in, in fifth year, then left to work. He said, well, why don't you just want to start school? I said, well, I don't, I'm not going to pass any exams, so I might as well just leave now and start work now. I said, I'm working in the middle of a football club, uh, doing sheet covers and stuff. And no, just doing anything to make a few quid. I was only on low wages, but I was, I was making, selling programs, just doing anything to make a few quid. Obviously, because I knew I had, had a baby coming. So I had to, like, just bang, grow up. So, about three months in, my partner's belly was getting really big. But nobody, still never told nobody, not even a doctor, a midwife, nobody all knew about this, apart from me and my partner. So we ends up uh, going out buying baby stuff, like, stashing it. Like, so nobody could find it. And then a few months later passed, so it was five months. It's getting really big now. So I said to my partner, I said, look, I said, we've got to tell somebody about this. I said, what do you mean? I said, like, we're going to have to tell somebody. But she was wearing, like, baggy clothes, so you couldn't, so she could hide the bum. But she was absolutely massive. I'm going to add pictures to the end of the, to this, so you can see how big she was at the time. And stuff like that. So we just two scared kids, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we were, we were two scared kids. Like, I didn't want to tell my parents because I thought they'd go mad with us being so young. She didn't want to tell her parents because she thought they'd do exactly the same. So we decided not to tell nobody. Anyway, it got a seven month and we never had a scan, never had a doctor, never told anybody. So I decided to tell my sister, who sadly passed away a few months back. So we decided to tell my sister. And she was like. And she was like, oh, are, are you being serious? Oh, yeah. So the next minute she's like, she had a flat down the road from, from us. Like, just not, not, not far down the road. So we, we got all the baby stuff and started putting her flat. She was going, like, show me. So we showed the bump. She went, I can't believe it. Like, how far are you? So we ended up going to a shop, buying a book. Like, saying how far on you are. Like, how, how far on we were. So she said, don't you think we should tell our parents? So well, no, not yet. I said, we'll leave that for now. So don't nobody know. So we ended up getting this uh, book, found out how far, like, how far on she, she really was. She was like, 
seven, nearly eight month. Just buy like, buy guess, buy a buy a book. So we 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 were buying all the stuff from the town, all the baby stuff. I was working. Gemma was babysitting, getting money. I was working, getting money. So we're putting everything together, buying baby stuff. We're sneaking around the back fields, like the back way to my sister's flat, like round and then into where flap had and stuff. So all we need, all, all we had to buy them was a pram. So our friend of the estate, she was selling a, a pram. It was brand like like brand new, and it was like a mint pram. So I said, "Well, we'll buy that one." So anyways, we ended up buying the pram. I was pushing it past my mum's and dad's house. My mum shot out the window. Oh, whose baby's that? I saw I was just taking. Uh, Tina's baby for a walk. All right. I come for you, Tina. I said, oh, yeah, we're back for our Tina bit. So me, me, Gemma, and my sister were, like, looking, laughing at each other. That was a close call. So we gets the pram, gets in there. So now it's getting, like, eight month to nine month and really, like, scared now. Like, really, really scared. So my partner was absolutely massive, like, and my mum's saying, you're not pregnant, you are you? You're not pregnant, you are you? She was going, no. So I, I said, mum, I said, mum, if you keep saying that way, because she put a bit of weight on, I said, if you keep saying that way, she's going to stop coming to the house. And she probably loved my mum, my mum probably loved Gemma. She went, oh, oh, so she's just we're putting weight on here because we're just eating takeaways and stuff. I said, but she's, like, she doesn't want to feel like she's putting loads of weight on. So... It gets to the, like, when she knew she was going to really have the baby. So anyways, we get to the ninth month, obviously. Still nobody knew, apart from me, Gemma and my sister, about about our, our baby. So we like, we're 16 at a time now, so we turned 16. Still scared little kids. And she started saying to me one night, oh, I'm getting... Uh, my belly, I'm getting niggly pains, I'm getting, I was saying, oh, like, so I was shaking, like, I was really in a, I was a state. She was going, no, I, really, I'm getting niggly pains. So I said, oh, then, we'll go to my sister's. She went, no, I said, yeah, we're going to have to, I said, because we're in, like, mom and dad, we're in my house. So I said, go, let's go to my sister's. So we go to my sister's, and it was a false alarm, she was, she was okay. <laughs> my sister was like a party animal, like, just love to be out, out in town stuff, young age, you know what I mean? Out out in town. So we ended up staying at my sister that night. So she goes back to my mum's and dad's the night after. Where did you go last night? I went down Julie's, uh, watched the box and I just you know just made some blago. So a few weeks later, two or three weeks later, she about two o'clock in the morning it was. I'm getting niggly pains. I said, oh, it might just be the much from last time. I said, no, these are really hurting me. So I'm stood in my bedroom, rubbing her belly. And she's like, cr my partner's crying. I said, oh, yeah, we're going to have to go. She said, no, she said, really, Grummet, I'm really, I'm in labour. Like, the waters had broke. I thought, oh, you were joking. So I ran in my mum's and dad's bedroom. I took my dad's mobile, my dad had a mobile phone. So I took that. He had about six quid in his pocket. I took that and we left. Don't my sister's. So I'm I'm there rubbing her belly. So I'm gonna have to go and with my sister Julie. So my sister Julie was partying in a flat, like not far away. So I said, Well, are you gonna be out right here? Why I go and get Julie? She went, Yeah, but I didn't know what to do. My head was all over. So I goes and gets my sister Julie. I said, Julie, you're gonna have to come. Like Gemma's in labour. Oh, well, I finish this drink. I said, Joe, I said, Oh, you're gonna have to come now. I said, honest, I said, see, she's she's in labour. So I'm not even joking. So we get to the gets my sister at this party. It comes down. I'm still I'm back there. I'm rubbing her belly, like really rubbing her belly, and she's crying. And so we phone the ambulance. So the ambulance come. We get to the hospital. So I'm sat there with me, Julie, my sister. So the woman says, uh, the nurse says, uh.
why are you so like sh shaken? I said, well, nobody knows. I said, what do you mean? I said, like, nobody knows, not even. There's only, like, Julio knows about me being pregnant, apart from me and the dad. Like, obviously, me and Gemma. So she, the nurse is like, what? Have you had any scans? Or I said, we said, we've had nothing. We're too scared. We were, we were kids, just two young kids, and we're too scared to do anything. She went, so, is your mum and dad coming up? I said, they, they don't know. Nobody knows about it. So well, well, don't you think it's like, Tammy, tell him. She's like seven meters dilated. So the, my baby, the, my son was due any arm. So I said, no, no, we're too scared. So we're well, gonna find, they've got to find out. Like, they've got to find out, so just get, so the nurse phones my, my partner's mum. She says, hey, we've got your daughter, uh, Gemma, in the labor suite. She went, oh, sorry, you've got the wrong number. And put the phone down. So the nurse phones her back and says, no, listen to me, don't put the phone down. We've got your daughter Gemma in the labour suite and she's seven metres dilated. We've got Graham with her. We've got Julie with her. Please come straight to the hospital. So my, my partner's mum saying, well, don't you have to be pregnant first? She went, look, this is, she thought someone was a prank calling her. She went, look, it's not a prank. It's not like, it's it, it, it's real. Come, get straight to the hospital. So, as that time, my sister went home to tell my mum and dad. So, my mum, and so, my dad knew about the knock on the door, because usually my sister like, just like, tap. Like, it was early in the morning. He, he talking eight o'clock in the morning. And it was on a Saturday. I still remember the day. It was on a Saturday. And my mum and dad had been out the night before the few, so, and my, my sister braid on, braid on the door, shout, mum, dad. So my mum comes to the door, what? G Gemma's in labour. What do you mean? Gemma's in labour. I knew she was pregnant, why didn't she tell us? Why didn't they just tell us? That they said, we're too scared to tell us. My dad, so my dad shouting from the top of the stairs, what's, what's up, what's up? Because they all are, like, people crying. Mum was crying, my sister was crying. What's happened? Gemma's in labour. My dad's saying, Gemma, who? Grummet's Gemma. What? You've got to be joking. So my dad comes running down the stairs, goes over his ankle and breaks his ankle. This is not made up. This is true story. So my dad breaks his ankle. So, so as we, my mum comes to the hospital, Gemma's parents on the way, Julie's on the way, and my dad's getting his foot sorted out. Everyone's at the hospital, but as I knew they were all coming, I went, because I was too scared. So I was walking home on my own from, from the hospital. It's about, it's about a mile and a half. So you're talking like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, I, I left, because I thought I'm not being here while everybody comes. So all the family's there now, my family, Gemma's family, but I'm at home. Like, I walked home, so I got my sister's care. I went and sat in there flat, and I just cried. Like, I, I was so scared at the time. I was thinking, oh, my, my parents were going to fight with Gemma's parents, and Gemma's parents might kick off on me, and everything just, like, you know, just everything's going through you at the time. So I just thought, right, like, just put the music on and just sit and chill and just try and... Just walk. It's done. What, what can I do? It, it's done. So I put the radio on, and Whitney Houston was on my love is your love. I remember everything that day, like everything. Uh, Whitney Houston come on my love is your love, and I was just sat there crying. So I thought I'm gonna go down and see my nana. My nana lived like the next flat on the left. <clears throat> so I went down. I says to my nana, I says uh, nana. Uh, Gemma's had a baby. Gemma's in labour. So what do you mean? I said, she's, she's in labour. Well, what? Uh, Grumma, what, what do you mean she's in labour? I said, Nana, I said, she's in, actually in labour. I said, so you're going to be your dad? I said, well, yeah, obviously. Like that. So my nan's on the phone to my, all my other family. You'll never guess who's in labour. Who? Oh, have a guess. So I saying, just tell us, just tell us. Gemma. Gemma, oh, Grummet's Gemma, in labour. How, 
oh, oh, what do you mean? So, like, so my nan has explained to him and everything, like, everything like that. So anyways, I just thought, look, I've got to get back up to the hospital. So about four, about four o'clock, five o'clock, I get some phone call on my dad's phone. Come up to the hospital, like, she's ready to have the baby at hand. So I'm saying, is everyone all right? I'm saying, look, everyone's just shocked. They're in, like, they're just a bit. Like, everyone's just shocked, but every, everything's fine. Like, don't worry about all, no one will argue, all this. So I, so I comf comforted me a bit, so I walks, walks up. But my dad kept saying to me, like, I was getting my wages, like, from, I was selling programs at Minnesota Football Club. I was doing bonus balls. Like, I was just doing anything to make a few quid. Just to pay f to have the money, f like for me baby being born. So he said to me, "What are you doing with all your money?" I said, oh, I'm "Just going." He said, "You gamble? Are you gambling?" I went, "Yeah, yeah, just, but like not at all, just just bits." Well, you better stop gambling. Like, I just blagged it, you know what I mean? But I wasn't. I was buying baby stuff, and Jim was doing the same with like babysitting. We were babysitting. She was, was just, everything went on the bit, like on the baby. So. I get up to the hospital, I walk in, and everyone just, like, the room went quiet, and everyone was just, like, looking at me. And everyone started cuddling me and stuff, so, so I was crying again. Like, I was, so many emotions going through my head. And it come to about quarter six, and, and Gemma had the ba baby, and she said, you could have told us, why didn't you tell us we could have got everything in for the baby? Like, everything. <clears throat> Like everything what you needed, we could have bought. I said, You don't need to. I said, We've already bought it. I said, You what? I said, We've got everything we need for, for, for our baby. And they all just looked at, looked at each other. Everyone in the room was crying. They said, Well, how have you done that? I said, Well, I've been working since I left like I left school early. We've been babysitting for people. Everything we've made, paper rounds, selling programs, doing bonus balls, working at Miserable Football Club. I said, We've got everything for the baby. I said, Doesn't need a thing. What a pram and I said, we've got everything, anything you need for the baby. I said, we've got. So everyone was crying. Like saying, I can't, like, I can't believe what, like, what's going on here. Like, they couldn't believe it. Even the nurses, like, were all like, whoa, like, what's going on? So. We has, we, we, I have a, it's, a, it's a baby boy. So I've called him after me. Everything's like, the next day I had a football match. And Jim, I said, get your football match. Don't be like, don't be things. Go and get your football match. So I went to football, I went to play my football game. And like, only a state now everyone's new about this, apart from like my football lads who I, who I play football with. So I was walking up the road, one of my mates, and people were shouting, all right, daddy, all right, daddy. My mate's going, no fucking nothing all these, aren't they? What, what, what do they keep calling daddy for? So I tells him, he goes, seriously? I said, yeah, seriously. Fuck, you wound me up. I said, I'm, I'm, I said, I'm being serious. That's why they all shout when I write daddy. So anyway, we get we get to the baby home. Like we get to my son home. Gorgeous little baby. I'll post all the pictures at the end of this. But this is where, like, this is not even the worldwide story. That's coming soon, like after the next part. So we get so over that. Gemma lived with her parents, I live with my parents. We ends up like always down man or always at ears, always together. So we ends up getting our own own, own house about about 17 year old. So like obviously I, I grew up early, like from a kid, and people say, oh, like when you have a baby that young, you'd have to grow up, you have to grow up there and then. So if anyone is out there who's pregnant, at 15, 16, and people tell you this and people tell you that. Live in proof, honestly, that you're not a bad person. I, my son now, he's worked since he left school for the council, and I couldn't be prouder of him. Like, really couldn't be prouder of him. Like, he, he just constantly works for the council, and, and so people will think, ah, if anyone's worried about it, don't be worried. I was, I was. Worried for nine full month, and so was my partner. So we ended up getting our own house together, and we had we had nout. We had absolutely nothing. Like 
getting tellies on tick and stuff like that, like, was, it was horrible. Like, you don't realise how hard it is to have your own house till you actually have your own house, if you know what I mean. So I'm out, like, trying to work, trying to earn a few quid, just trying to just get by. So anyways, we ends up moving, like, in this house, and we, we haven't to pawn stuff in there just to get by. We didn't have no rich parents, you know what I mean? So we just had to just do what we had to do. So we ended up getting that. We ended up exchanging someone to another house. And then when we moved in this other house, everything was like, was, was better, a bit better, you know what I mean? Like we, like I was working, we didn't, we weren't struggling as much, if you know what I'm saying? Like, and like, no one, no one could still believe, like, what, what happened. Like, you still get to talk about now. People, I post every year on Facebook and people say, I love this story. So my son was born. We had our own house. But we were obviously grown adults now. We had, to, we had to grow up quick. 16 year old. And I've done exam. Gemma passed her exam. She still never went and collected them. So we don't even know what, what, what exam she got. So we're moving on now to my second child. But I'll just have a cut this video now and then, because it's going 20 minutes so I can put it all together and post one hour of this one and then one hour the next one. So that's the first part of the story. But I'll add part two onto this. Then the world exclusive will be on three and four. So we had the house, but we weren't struggling like we were like before, like in the old house, because that was really bad. But so we so we ended up moving to a different house. So we plan to have a we plan to have a baby this time. So obviously we could tell everybody. So we had a uh, we kept trying, we kept trying. Anyway, Gemma falls pregnant while we're second child. It was a little girl called Ellie. We called her Ellie. She come out looking like Annie, little ginger curls, absolutely beautiful. And like she's another one now. We're so proud of self taught nail tech. But I'm going to speak more about Ellie later on but uh yeah so she was she was born planned beautiful like everything you need as a daughter so we had a son and daughter now so everything now was like we've got a son and daughter we don't need any more kids now say we feel in a few more yeah if we want any more we'll have more so we both decided on that and then obviously once you've had two you have three don't you so as soon as Ellie was born, like obviously, I was one of the boys, Gemma was one of the girls. But so we got one of each, so we both decided like we've got a boy, we've got a girl, everything everything's cushy, as we say around here. So my daughter, like watching her grow up, beautiful, kind, everything you need as a daughter. There's, I can't remember much about my daughter's birth. Like, it, it's mad. It's like my, my next son's birth. I can't remember much about that one, but the my son after that, I can. It's just all, like, like mad. So, like, even, like, I've even written bits down, like, like, what, what the stuff, what I say, because, like, I, I can't remember much of it, but I want to come back on my daughter in a bit. So, my third child, like, it was... Wasn't planned or nothing. She, Gemma fell pregnant, so obviously you've got to go to, the, to, to your midwife. You're pregnant. They've done a like it's the random blood check, blood test, and then the phone up on the Monday saying, uh, "Can you come to the hospital? We need to uh, uh, speak to you." So I'm like, like, what what what's going on? Like what 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 for? So I don't know. So we go to the hospital on the Monday. We, like the doctor, the nurse pulls in the room, she said, you, 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 we've done blood, blood test on you and it's come as a your high level for having a baby with Down syndrome. We were only like 26 at the time. So I thought, whoa, like Down syndrome, like, what do you mean? Like, can you tell us like more? So well, you're high risk, like people are high, some people are high risk, some people are low risk. But we can do more tests like the, to to find out 
if he'd be well, I've down said, so yeah, so that's yeah, do that. So we went through more tests, they've done scans where they measure the back of the neck to see if, like, if your baby has got Down syndrome. And I said, everything looks fine. Uh, I wouldn't worry, look too much into it, everything looks fine. So I, I, run, I run football teams, like, I run a football team for like 15 years of the estate, of the council estate, like, all voluntary. And we, we've done a big tournament to go to where uh, Belgium and play in a big like European tournament. So my partner was due like two weeks after that. So she said, you just go. Like you you just you just go. And then like when we get back I've I've our baby been nearly due. So when I was away she felt late she went into labour and so she phoned me she said uh, I'm in labour. I saw I'll try and get home. She went, there's no point because I'm like, I'm, my waters have broke or I've, I'm ready to, like, ready to have the baby now. So I was coming home the next day anyway. So anyway, about a couple of hours passed and she phones me crying. I said, I said what's the matter? What's the matter? Uh, like, uh, the old baby's come out and I know he's got Down syndrome. I said, well, how do you know? I said, what's the doctor said? She said, nothing. The doctor's saying, like, he hasn't. I said, but she's a bra. I can see her. I know he has. I said, well, don't worry too much. No, he's gone blue. And if I put him straight into a, is it inky bit or to, for oxygen? I said, is he OK? So the other said, he's fine. I said, well, that's the main thing. I said, as long as he's OK, like, he's OK. Just don't, don't worry. If he's got Down syndrome, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll cope with the parents. So I get home and I goes and sees him and it, like they, they done test and he come back, he did, he did have Down syndrome. So the nurse said, look, uh, he's got Down syndrome. I said, look, I said, it doesn't matter. I said, he still be loved the same as any, my other two. I said, be no different at all. I said, just, it is what it is. So he has to wear, uh, a week passed and he's still in hospital. I'm saying, what's going on? They found he had a, like a murmur in his heart. So, like, we just, we're still young, you know what I mean? We're still 26 years old. It's still scary to think, like, I'm thinking, holding his heart. Like, so I'm saying, what's, what does it mean by holding his heart? Is he going to be okay? Yeah, he's going to be, he'll be okay. So, they said, he's in hospital for six weeks after we had him. I said, right, you, what we've got to do? Like, he's got to be on oxygen. He's oxygen dependent. I said, right. He said, so on your buggy, like, you'll have an oxygen bottle and it'll be on oxygen dependent. I said, so all that before? They said, we don't know. So he was oxygen dependent for uh, six months. So we get him out of hospital, obviously. Loved, like, bundle of joy. Absolute bundle of joy. My son loved him. My daughter loved him. Like, we were just... We treat no different, like, it's still a day of treating no different. Just got a disability and, that, and that's it. But I said disability, ability. So we get him home, gets, then the people started coming. We had, on a night, you had to have an oxygen tank. <clears throat> so they fitted like an electric one in. And he kept, he kept ripping these tubes out of his nose. So obviously, for the first six, seven months, we didn't really sleep. Because he just kept ripping them out, ripping them out. So all, all night we were like, looking to make sure he's kept these, because he had like nose prongs, just make sure he kept, keeps keeps them in. So we said, <clears throat> and the machine was loud. Like we had that, in the, that was on the landing. And obviously my son was in the bedroom, but all the other night was <sighs> like the oxygen getting thrown through the, to my son. So we'd like set the alarms every hour, making sure he would wake up and make sure he was Adam, like he had his oxygen in and stuff like that. I would get enough do feeds, taking turns, doing the feeding. Like everything as you do as a parent. So like my daughter and my son are not used to all this, like 
like the oxygen stuff and all that. So like, you have to tell them, like, look, he's, he, he has to have this to help him. So uh, they understood. And then that was it. Just loved him like we love it all over too. Like not a bit of difference. Everything. I treated no different. Watched him grow. Like absolutely buzzed off him. Laughed at him because he like, just used to love to dance and sing and like everything. But now he's, he's, he's 16. He's quiet. Like... All he does is, is likes his tablet to watch Emmerdale or sing and sing through like through, through, through music on his tablet. He just loves a tablet. So he, he's non verbal. Like he's non verbal. He also has, has autism. So if any parents out here who like who've got children with Down syndrome or autism and or expect them one and don't know, just feel free to message me on TikTok. Benadorm underscore Grummet. And if I can, I'll help, help anybody. So, my son's now 16. So, my, we, 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 have a, we have another child. And this is where the world exclusive comes into it. So, I said, right, because you've had a, a, a baby with Down syndrome, we've got to test you again to see if you have a baby with Down syndrome. So, oh, yeah, no problem. So, I've done a test. No, nah, no. There's nothing, no, no, nothing showing like he could have Down syndrome, nothing at all. Uh, went and got a 3D scan done, everything perfect, your baby's perfect, grown fan. They said to Gemma, do, uh, do you want us to do a, a summer, but he could, I said, no, we don't want that, just, just like, we just, whatever. So, but no, like, he, he is, like, he's, the baby's not got Down syndrome, so, like, just, just, so, but we went and done our, like, private scans and other scans and stuff like that, and, like, everything showed normal, everything showed normal, so, it comes to, like, eight months, so we get everything off the baby getting ready, Gemma's water's break in the kitchen. My, our friend and Gemma's sister, we all go to the hospital. So we get into the hospital and my, my, I wouldn't go in with Gemma. I didn't want to go in like for a birth. I said, no, no I'm not going in. Not, I can't do birth. So, like, I'll, I'll wait outside. So we get to, uh, we're in a room. Gemma's in labour and a friend and a, a sister come out and saying she has to go for an emergency caesarean because the baby's head's not pushing out on it. it, it could be dangerous. I said, all right, so the, well, so now what? So so the, the panic set in, like, thinking, well, what's going on now? Like, what's happened? So my, our friend and... Gemma's sister I said, You go in, but I said, Is caesarean done? I said, I can't see caesareans. I said, No. They said, Well, us two can't. You don't have one person in. I said, Well, you go in. She said, No, no, because that's not fair on Gemma's sister. I said, Well, Gemma's sister's going. No, because that's not fair on her best, best friend. So I ended up getting stitched up to go in for the caesarean. I didn't want to. Like, it, it just, I just did not want to go in. I thought, No, I don't want to do caesarean. Like, I, I can't do it like that. Anyway, doctor said, look, you won't say nothing. There'll be like a screen over. I said, oh, is that oh, like, th that's it? I said, all right. So they go, right, we're going to numb, like, numb Gemma, obviously, while they're doing the cesarean. So she, Gemma's awake while they're doing it. So I'm like talking to Gemma. So I was in there for about, about half an hour. 40 minutes, and then next minute, like, baby was born. So, obviously, Gemma had a big screen on her, so they couldn't give the baby straight to Gemma, so they give the, give the baby straight, like, straight to me. <clears throat> so, I, like, I looked, and Gemma seen my face change. And she said, what's the matter with you? I said, no. I said, she's probably gorgeous, and I was crying. 
But I knew, I knew he had Down syndrome. And Gemma knew about my face, so it wasn't right. So, uh, Gemma said, Tim, what's the matter? Tim, what's the matter? I said, he's got Down syndrome. She said, really? I said, yes, yeah. he has, yeah. So the doctor said to me, I said to the doctor, uh, so Gemma was crying, or like, it was like, so terrifying with our first boy with Down syndrome. Like, it's going to be the same again, like all the oxygen. And it, it was hard. It was really, really hard, honest. Like, being so young and, like, it, it was hard. But, obviously, we got him in the, the... Then the nurse took him off me, put him in. So I, I was sitting, Gemma, don't worry. Like, don't just... it will be all right. It, it, just be the same as Mason, where he's happy and bubbly and bouncing about all over. And he will, he will, like, he will love it. Like, he's just another kid with Down syndrome. We've got one, one, one out of two. So I says to the doctor, I said, uh, he's got Down syndrome, hasn't he? He went, no. Nah. I said, he has. The doctor went, he hasn't. The nurse said, uh, I said, has he got, has he got Down syndrome? She went, no. Nah. I said, but, but he, I said, I know for a fact he has it. The doctor was saying, look, I can assure you, I can assure you, Gemma, your baby has not got Down syndrome. I said, right, no problem. So obviously Gemma come round, because obviously whatever they give you. So Gemma come round. And Gemma said straight away that our, our fourth child had Down syndrome. So I said to the doctor, I want checks to, to see if he's got Down syndrome. I said, because I, I know he has, and my partner knows he has. So they've done the checks, he come back, he said, uh, Graham, yeah, he has, he, 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 Graham, he's got Down syndrome. I said, I knew by looking, like, I said, I knew straight away that he had, I said, but, I said, it doesn't matter, I said, like, our, our other one who's got Down syndrome, I said, he, he's just a bundle of joy. The doctor went, another one? I said, oh, yeah. He said, you've got two children with Down syndrome? I said, well, yeah, this is my second one with Down syndrome. He said, do you know that's not known? I went, what do you mean? He said, that's never, he said, I've been doing this for 36 years. He said, I've never known it. And he phoned about, like he started phoning about the doctor. He come back, he said, Graham, he said, it, it's one in, like, it's not known, he said, unless, like, the only the only thing known, he said, about this, he said, if you have uh, twins with Down syndrome, like, both twins, he said, like, it's it's not known, he said, you you, you are, you, you are different, he said, if I, he said, if I put another thing on it now, he said, you're probably the only one in the country with two children with Down syndrome and two children with not Down syndrome. I said, look, I said, it doesn't matter. I said, we we'll love him all the same, like we did our, like, my firstborn, uh, our Mason with Down syndrome. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, we'll just, like, carry on, just crack on with it. I said, like, well, it's what we do. He said, but, he said, I can't get my head around it. He said, really? He said, like, I've never known it. And he's going to tell the other nurses, the other nurses are coming in saying, right, when you, when you get home, you need to get straight on the phone to magazines and papers and stuff like that. I said, because this, this is going to be a worldwide story. I said, I don't. I said, what do you mean? They said, they said this will make you rich. I said, they're my children. I said, I don't need it. Like, I said, they're my children. I said, I don't need them, like, splat love magazines and stuff. I said, they're going to be loved all the same, no matter what. They said, no, it, it, it's unbelievably rare. It's like one in the millions. Like, this doesn't happen. He said, it, 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 it's unknown. Google it, do anything you want. So we started Googling stuff. And we found one in, in America with two, with a boy and a girl with Down syndrome. And I couldn't find any more. So we kept looking, kept looking, kept looking. We couldn't find anything, like nothing at all. So when we were having doctor's appointments, like we were taking, like, my son, we were saying, oh, oh no, it's for, uh, this one's for money. And we're going, well, 
Manny's the one with Down syndrome. I said, no, Mason's got it. Mason's got Down syndrome as well. You've got two children Down syndrome, yeah? And like, they're looking at us all confused and stuff, thinking we're like lying. I'm saying, we've got two children with Down syndrome. And one, a, a doctor said one day, like when we're in there, the doctor said, oh, sorry to hear that. My partner flipped out. He said, what do you mean, sorry to hear that? He said, no, no, I don't mean like that. She said, look, he said, these are our children. They love the same as my two children who hasn't got Down syndrome. There's not a bit of difference. So anyway, like, my son's, my son's now, it's 10 years before I thought the story, by the way. It took me 10 years. But I seen someone on TikTok a few months back saying, uh, they're being told they might have a child with Down syndrome, they're really scared and this and that. that that's the only reason why I'm telling the story. So, you can Google it, you can do what you want, you can... There's very few in the world, not in England, in the world, who's got two children with Down syndrome in the same family, what's got two children, what hasn't got Down syndrome. Like twins, yeah? Like, that's one in a hundred thousand or something. But to have two with Down syndrome is off the scale, like, off the scale rare. So, everyone's like, pe people still don't believe now, like, two. But when, I, when I'm going to put this video, I'm going to post videos of my two children who's got Down syndrome on, on this, and you'll see the joy they bring to our family. Like, all they do is dance, sing. Like, they're just lovable kids. And my son and my daughter, who's, like, older now, like, they've got their... They've got their own family. My daughter, like, she just, she, she, like, she loves them. Like, like just constantly with them and phoning them or FaceTiming them and stuff like that. My son's the same, like, constantly coming down, cuddling them, FaceTiming them. Just absolutely loved by everybody in the family. And, like, it was hard. Like, it, it, I, like, it, it wasn't easy, put it that way. Like, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, yeah, it was easy. We've done this, done that. It wasn't. It was really hard. Like, because one of my sons is non-verbal. He's got autism. He's the oldest one with Down syndrome. Like, non-verbal. We have to feed him. We have to, like... We do everything for him, sort of thing, but, he, but you'll give him a tablet or something, or a telly remote, and he'll put what he wants on. But he's non-verbal. He says bits. But my other one is just, like, off-the-scale character. And he, he should have his own social media account because he's absolutely off his nut. Like, he, he got an award last week at, at school and he started doing all this with his arms and showing his muscles and stuff. Like, he's just, uh, just a proper character. So, <clears throat> like, my daughter helps out. Like, if we go away, my daughter will have him, like, have our kids now. But they don't bother. Like, they're, they're, now they're not hard to... But, but what happens, right, the... the They've got like low immune systems, so when I can't sit on here, but you know when the pandemic come, we were like strict like in here for over a year, like no one in like getting all the stuff. I know thinking back now, I'm thinking why, but when you're watching the news and seeing all the stuff on the news and all, you think like, hang on, like it's all like. I, I, my family are fucking my life and my partner's life, you know what I mean? But when you watch it then, like when like you put yourself in my like in my shoes then. And you're reading on there saying, Oh, people with like low immune systems have got this chance of living and stuff like that. You put yourself in my shoes. I was like anxiety through the roof, like very bad. Like really bad. And then you've got like people saying, ah, this and I'm saying, look, like people you, you don't have two children who, like like we have, like whose low immune system who can, who could die if they... Like if my, my, my kids get a sickness bug, they'll end up in hospital with it, like for three or four days, where other kids are just shaking it off sort of thing. So people people probably think, to me, yeah, but you're in Benidorm all the time. I only go to Benidorm, right, to try and build a future for my kids. Because my year, I, what I really want, right, I, I would love nothing more than to take my kids to Spain and move over there with my kids in Spain, in Benidorm, because they absolutely love it. 
Like, I take them twice a year. They go all over, like, we take them everywhere. Like, don't forget, like, like I'm not trying to big myself up here, but like, I've got two kids with disabilities. I do charity work. I run kids' football teams voluntary. And also do my own work. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 like, it's manic. But when I'm over there for like three and four, like three and four days at a time, it's not like, oh, look at them back and bend them. I'm just trying to build a future for my kids, and that's all I'm trying to do. Like, eventually, I want over there's bars and stuff to let us promote them and pay us to promote them, and that's what that's all we want out of it. And we do pranks for people because we get people with mental health saying to us, oh. Like getting inboxes saying, "Oh, thank you very much for the, like, you, you make us laugh and you help me out." We even got one who was gonna do something with himself, and he said, "You've just saved my life." He said, "I was flipping through TikTok, we hadn't found you, or I'd have been dead." He said, "I was just about to do it and stuff like that, right?" And it, I'm probably gonna get trolled on TikTok, but if I do, I do. But I'm not bothered. The only sick man of people would do that. So, like I said, so now me, so in lockdown. My daughter done her, uh, she started her own, like, nails, like, she started doing, doing nails and stuff. And she just practised every day for, like, a year. And now she's, like, a proper nail tech, like, self-taught. And just got, like, her own, like, own little hide shop, like, working in the shop, like, doing nails. Like, unbelievable talent. My son, he works for the council and he's made me a granddad of 34. I think the youngest ever granddad in the UK is 32. So I've got, a, I've got two children with Down syndrome, what's worldwide not known. And I was a granddad of 34, what's like very rare, put it that way. I might have even been 33, I don't know. But all this video was about, right, was just to let people know that, like, if if, if you get told you, you, your kid's got a chance of Down syndrome, don't panic, don't worry, because they're a bundle of joy, and they really are. Like, me and my partner need breaks now and again, so that's why we go away. We, 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 but we, all, we won't, like, just go away and... We'll take the kids somewhere first for, for like a week. And then a few months after, we'll, we'll have our little break. Because it is hard, like, it is hard, but... Like, it's, it'd be hard with one, so imagine two. But, like, don't... Don't ever... And I'm only telling this story now because it's Down Syndrome Awareness Month tomorrow. And... It's, I, I could have told the story ten years ago, but I thought, no, I don't need to, but... When I seen that on... On there... Uh, something on TikTok about them being scared, saying the, the high risk of Down syndrome. Don't worry about it. They're a bundle of joy. I absolutely love it. Like, my son's got his little family now. Two little gorgeous boys. Made me a granddad 34. Absolutely proud of him. My daughter, absolutely proud of her. My, my other son, just with the one with Down syndrome who, who doesn't talk, he's also got autism. He's just no bother at all. Just sits there with his tablet, loving it like little old man, cup of tea. Or I can say a cup of tea, so we have to go and dumb a cup of tea. He lives off ravioli, spaghetti and uh, yogurts. He won't have nothing else because he can't chew properly. So if, if you give it if you try to give him like a pizza or anything, he'd shut it out the way. No, no, no. <clears throat> it's gotta be spaghetti or ravioli every day of his life. Like, and I'm not joking, that's every day. So, the other little one, he'll eat absolutely anything. He's, he can't talk properly, but he's not like, he can, like, sort of say, he can say, like, he can talk better, sort of thing. But he's still not, like, fully verbal, but you can have, a, like, a little conversation with him, you know what I mean? But honestly, they're both bundles of joy. So I've got four children, I'm proud of absolutely every one of them. And even my grandchildren, 
proud of them, even though they made me a grand out of 34. Who cares? But you can go off here now, you can Google, you can do whatever you like. And if you find anything where two, two people, a couple, have got two children without Down syndrome, or even one without Down syndrome, and two with Down syndrome, you will not find it. This is worldwide, not, not, not like local, it's worldwide. There's very few in the world. And after this goes out, there's going to be magazines and papers and everything onto me. Like, that's guaranteed 100%. Because now you can start seeing, if you watch, like, Emmerdale and... Or you can start seeing people with disabilities, even modelling jobs. I'm not just saying it right. My two, my two with Down syndrome could get a modelling job straight away. They're absolutely beautiful. Like, you see them now getting TV roles and stuff like that. Like, the, now they are starting to get more into it. But I've always done football, football teams for like children of the council's day. But but I want to I want to do something for kids with with disabilities. I'm gonna be the first person in our area, or probably even in England, to have a competitive team with kids with disabilities. I want to make it happen. Hopefully, just get them all together and say, look, let's just do it. So that's a worldwide exclusive for you all, what I've all been telling you. But don't forget, share this, subscribe it, and if you know anybody whose children have autism or Down syndrome and are worried and scared and stuff, just my messages are open. Because I know this is going to blow up. I guarantee it'll blow up. I'm going to post the videos on this of them both and... Like, you'll see how, how, how much fun they are. And even my little grandson has autism. And, it, like, it, he's just happy. They're just, they're just constantly both happy all the time. Like, my two kids are always happy. My grandson's happy. Like, it's it, 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 it's mad. Like, you'd think, like, they, they are just buns of joy, honest. You'll, you'll see videos of them dancing and you'll just watch them and think, wow. Like I take him to Spain, and my youngest one, with Down syndrome, he, he's on the dance floor with, with with the acts, like dancing, and everyone's dancing around him. He loves the attention. When we have one, won't he's quiet. But uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I'm just trying to fit, think to fit a few more bits in, because there's a lot more than that. I told my life story. Well, it's not a life story. It's just like a true story. But I have seen a parent with three Down syndrome children, but she also has tested positive for Down syndrome. But apart from that, I know there's one in uh, Tennessee in America, and I can't find any more with any more. So we we one in millions and millions. I'm just trying to think back, like what else. Oh yeah, I told you about my sister passing away recently. Like, that was a shock. That was hard. And my mum passed away about, well, it was five years ago. England, England were playing Colombia on the night. And she phoned me saying she wasn't well. And I said, I'll come up now. She went, oh no, I don't come up. She went, don't come up. I'm all right, I'm going to bed. So the next day I tried to phone her. There was no answer, but like, I thought she might have been out, like went out, because it was Wednesday, I thought, it's Tuesday, I thought she'd gone out for a couple of drinks. And the Wednesday I tried to phone, still no answer. I thought she's not answering, so I went up, and uh, I went up and I found her, she, she was died, she was dead in the chair. It fucking broke me. <laughs> It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I'm not like on here doing this for a fucking thing, but.
But someone in books last night saying that they just that the parents are just one of the parents have died now. And I'm trying to comfort them. I'm not even over my mother. It was five years ago. And then like my sisters, they not passed up passed away recently. And I don't want to go back down that road. What what I was like with my mum, because I was riddled with guilt for fucking years. All I ever thought, like, why didn't I go up that night? Why didn't I go up that night? I was so busy watching fucking football. That's what I said say to myself. But I was just trying to comfort someone last night. Say, so I, know, I know what it's like. But, like, I was just fucking riddled with guilt, like... For years and years, and like, why did I go up that night? But she said to me, like, you don't know, like, I'm going to bed, you're all right. And then, like, a few months back, my sister passed away. That was a fucking total shock, but, like, I said to myself, I said, look, I said, I'm not going to go back down that road like it was my mum. I was, I was fucking absolutely broke, like, I was broken. I'm not doing this for like thing, I'm just trying to tell you like a few bits, you know what I mean? But it's all part of the like the story is fucking but that was that was hard. And my sisters was hard, like proper hard. I haven't really grieved over my sister yet. Properly. We were close, like very close. But I've said to myself, well, I'm not gonna go back down that road like I was when my mum passed away because of I was fucking two years non-existent in my family. Like, absolutely broken, seeing your mum died. And then, just guilt. But anyway, back on the positive stuff. Yeah, so back on the positive stuff. So yeah, I've got two children with Down syndrome. It's well wired. Like, it's not known. It could be well wired. So, you just can check it all out yourselves. If you find anything shared to me, because I wanted to, like, see other people's, what other people's like. I'm going to start uploading. I'll, I'll, I'll add these onto these, uh, onto these, onto these videos. I'll add them onto the videos at the end, but they are a bundle of joy. Like, honest, like, people think, oh, like, people that even, like, could get aborted and all that, like, you don't, you, you'll absolutely love it. They'll bring joy to your life. They're just constantly funny and stuff. Like, when I show these videos of uh, my children, you will love it, you will laugh. I'll even upload them on my TikTok. Probably get little divvy trolls and stuff, but... Let them be, you know what I mean? If they want to be trolls and fucking... They can do that, but if I, I don't even have to find out once where they're, where, who they're where, where they live. And... That'll be it. Shit of the co-op. But no, so if anyone's out there, and it's only because I'm doing this because I've seen a video of someone who was... Bit scared because they've got test box in. They've got a, a child, a child uh, high risk of having a child with Down syndrome. There's loads more what I've even said. It's written down here. Like I've got to write things down because I've that 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 much of stuff to tell. Like there's that much stuff as just it's just a full like it. It was all just a shock. Like. Oh yeah, my, my first son got hypothermia. Like when he, my one, the first, the first child had with Down syndrome, he, he had uh, hypothermia. And just, I've said the oxygen part, the heart murmur part. But yeah, if anyone tells you, like if you if you're having a child with Down syndrome or with aut like autism or anything, you need a few. Just inbox me if I can help anywhere I will. But sorry about that little 
bit there when I was crying now. That I come back last night when that woman messaged me saying she's been broke since her parents, like since her mother passed away and it just fucking bang. Brought everything back. But that's a world well exclusive people. So if you can find anything or anyone in the world, I want you to share to me. When I say one in millions, I mean one in absolutely millions. And this is 100% true. I'll post the videos along, along with this and see what you all think. Don't forget to uh, comment, like and subscribe if you will. But yeah, it took me 10 years to tell that story. 10 years. And no one... Only people who know me off the estate know that. Like, obviously know that I've got my two, my two children. I have four children, obviously, but two with Down syndrome, and it's not known. Like, it's not known. So there's the worldwide exclusive, what he's all about. So now we'll get back to what? Back to... Sort of big dog for a bit, eh? So big dog... Oh, and that's that's this is one of the reasons why I was mentioning Big Brother and all that, like what why I was I, I would if I would or I wouldn't, like that's why I couldn't give a shit because you know fame, right? It doesn't fucking phase me one little tiny bit. I couldn't give a shit. The money be nice if you won it, but you away from your family for six full weeks. If you get that fire, you know what I mean? So but now everybody knows, like it's out. Let's see the feedback. Hopefully it'll be uh, positive I can't have done with negative just the way you've got to look at it you'll think of someone having a go at your child I know there's some sick man people out there like someone says stuff about your child like I wouldn't like I keep saying I do nothing wrong to nobody all I do is help people I do charity work I do voluntary work and like if you troll, honest, if you, me and Big Dog are genuine, and you will not see a, no, a two over genuine people than us. That's 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 the truth. Oh, and by the way, I'm still my partner now from school, so I did, I've got to mention that. And she's an amazing mother, and like I, I'd be fucked about her to tell you the truth. Like absolutely amazing. So, and I forgive his aunties and uncles I mentioned and all, because all of them are good to him. They're good to the old kids as well. Cody, I forgive you all mention before you be on the phone. And like, our grandparents and the grandparents and stuff are good. Like, obviously, my mum's passed away. My sister proper absolutely adored them. Like my mum, like they were proper. She was constantly around here, like, watching them out. If we went to the bingo or we had a night out, she'd be around here watching them. Then she's, like, she passed away, if you, like I said. But, yeah, gives you feedback, people. Hope you all enjoyed it. So now when we're on TikTok and do story time, we can we can do story time all, of, all the time. Because now our, the story is actually out. <laughs> So I'll, I'll post it on, on on YouTube now, and I'll try and get I'm gonna get some videos of them both dancing and stuff, and then I'll add it at the end of it. Thanks everybody for watching and everybody who's tuned in and everybody who's likes and subscribes and comments and all the TikTok followers and everybody who's had a laugh of us. And like we we haven't changed as parents. Like even though like we don't treat no differently. Like I've said, I'm probably gonna repeat myself here and eight, but. We don't, we, we know they're no different, we treat them no different. And anybody with children with special needs, just you will get that. Like, like I'll wind my son up, like our money, because he's a little character, I'll wind him up. So he'll, like he'll bite back, but pe parents who's got special needs kids will understand what I'm, what I'm saying here. Like when we, like we have, I have like laughing carry on my son that like, like with all my kids, you know what I mean? Love them all the bits.
in my world, all four of them. But yeah, that's it. The world exclusive is out. I'll see you all tonight on TikTok. Yeah, and the football team, and the football team, be cool. What you like? My son was in it from a young age till fifteen. Like, so we done that. Very good player. Very talented. Like I keep saying, I couldn't be prouder of him. Like, I couldn't be prouder. And my dad does the, my dad's done the football for 30 years. 30 years this year, he's done it all voluntary. He works three jobs and still has a time now. Even told by the doctor, he needs to chill out. He's still there every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday. Like, training, like, not, he, he stepped back from the training part, but he's always there about helping put posts up and stuff. Like, so it's a big shout out to my dad as well. He, he, he has kept kids off a council estate for over 30 years. And like, it's unbelievable really what, what he's done for the community. It's just mad. It, like 30 years is a long time to commit to something. It all started by smashing a, a window, like with a football in my garden. But we'll speak about that another time. That can be on the next little bit of the podcast uh, YouTuber but yeah I hope you all enjoyed that and I'll see you all on TikTok tonight for story time get the net and my my partner's parents that they always helped out our, our, our kids as well like shout out to them as well always helped like from a, when we were young, like we'd have a night out, they'd have them, we, or my parents would have them, like honest, like we, we, we did get help, but what I'm saying is just don't like, or if we went away, like they'd have them, they'd have them for like four or five days for us while we, we had a little break. So it's just like I keep saying, if, if don't, don't think it's a bad thing, because honest, it's a good thing. Like, you wouldn't believe the joy they bring, and I will upload the videos to prove that. So, shout out to Ellen and Fred as well as my dad, Graham. I'll see you all later.